Hello there, Nat Edwards and Cal Toomey with you on afl.com.au and the AFL Live app. We are counting down to round two and the highly anticipated showdown between Adelaide and the Power Cal. Looking forward to that because we thought it may not go ahead, but thanks to the SA government, it can. The Crows, they suffered a narrow loss in round one against the Swans, but what is the state of play right now at Westlakes? Well, the state of play is that they get that game against Port Adelaide at Adelaide Oval, and then they go to the Gold Coast for three weeks. So that'll be an interesting situation for them to deal with. Of course, it hasn't been controversy-free for no, the Crows hasn't. throughout this period as a result of that Barossa Valley training breach, which obviously caught all the attention off the AFL world through that period. But they were penalised. Some would say not harshly enough, but some would say it was about right. But they were penalised to a degree and certainly put on notice that anything like that happens and there'll be some severe setbacks. I guess the main issue there was that Ben Hart, their assistant coach, won't be there as the start of the season recommences. So, look, they've been in some controversies there, the Crows, but they'll be keen to get some uh, footy back up and going. And what needs to change heading into round two, aside from maybe Tex not missing (laughs) that shot late in the game against the Swans, but what actually needs to be tweaked? Well, they got smashed out of the midfield in round one, Nat, and that was partly by the doing of Sam Naismith, the Swans ruckman, who had a dominant outing against Riley O'Brien. That was really impressive for uh, the Swans' perspective, but for the Crows, they need to tighten up in that midfield and just get things going. There's such a reliance on the Crouch brothers, isn't there, Matt and Brad? really lead the way in that bracket. But yeah, I think that there's something that you know, has to be improved around that, that group. Nine out of ten, nine players in the Crows round one side had less than 10 possessions. Wow. So that That's just shocking. shows that you need to get your ball, uh, hands in the ball really early and do your hard work in the middle and then hopefully uh, do some stuff from there. But look, they need to tighten up. It's new coach Matthew Nix will have some plans that he would have worked through over the last three months. Personnel-wise, how are they tracking on the injury front? Yeah, they're looking pretty good, actually, because they're only down to Riley Knight on the injury front. He's had uh, Achilles issues over the summer. He was looking likely to play around sort of round three, round four, but unfortunately he's come back to training, suffered a bit of a setback there with his heel, so we'll miss another four to six weeks of training. So we'll see him in the second half of the season, that half-forward option for the Crows. But other than that, they're looking pretty healthy. What about uh, a player who might have benefited most from ISO life? Yeah, I think this one, we talk about healthiness and injuries in that respect, has to be Tom Duday. I just, I'm looking forward to seeing him out there, uh, a runner-up in the Rising Star a couple of years ago. But what he was promising in a key defensive role last year was slashed away from him when he did his knee in round one at the start of 2019. Hasn't played since then. Had a bit of a setback in the summer. Uh, so wouldn't have played early rounds off the home and away season in a regular year. But now, as a result of this uh, COVID-19 shutdown, we'll come back and play in round two and we'll make a big difference for the Crows, I think, in that back half. Oh, he certainly will. Such a good player. Uh, finally, anyone we should be watching from an AFL fantasy point of view? Well, not much jumped out in round one because they just couldn't get the ball. <laughs> so uh, there wasn't a lot to take from round one in terms of who would shine from an AFL fantasy point of view. But the player I think we should look at is Chase Jones, a second-year midfielder for the Crows, a first-round pick a couple of years ago. Uh, the Tasmanian... Youngster can play across half forward, through the wing, through the middle. So I really like what he can provide. And hopefully this is his year to jump up and maybe take a punt on Chase Jones in your AFL fantasy side. All right, keep an eye on Chase. Thanks, Cal. Cannot wait for the showdown. Stay with us here on afl.com.au as we count down to the return of footy.